Hello folks, this is Turbo Corvair, and I'm uh, making a video as requested of the sim pit that I, uh, I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, building it from scratch. Uh, I had some serious space limitations, so I basically wound up building a sort of a closet in one corner to, to put this in. Uh, I kind of lost a window, but there are two others in the room, so it's not too bad. Alright, so right now I have the bright lighting on uh, to try to give you the first glimpse here of what's going on. Um, you'll have to forgive the fact that I'm using a digital camera. I do not have a video camera available. Uh, but basically, this gives you the idea of the, of the basic layout. Those down there are actually rails that the chair uh, and the door ride on uh, in order to guide them properly into place. So I'm going to go ahead here. and log on, and you'll hear the classic sounds. There we go. Okay, so let me try to go through some of the features here. Uh, I guess I'm going to start up on the top. If you look up here at the ceiling, uh, on the right there, that was originally the face of my tower, and the fan there was actually uh, the side of the, the tower that I used when I built the computer. Uh, I've kind of reconfigured them as you can see. The, the computer is setting above that fan, um, so it is running some, some air through the computer, uh, but it's no longer attached to it or anything. It's not part of the ceiling itself. Uh, underneath the cover there on the right hand side with the black and yellow stripes on it is the reset button. So you pop that cover open and hit the reset button. Uh, it's supposed to be sort of like a, an emergency eject kind of theme going on there with that. Uh, now, up in the top left hand corner, uh, on the far left, not lit up right now, is my master switch, which turns off everything in here except the router and modem because they're needed for other things throughout the house, other computers and whatnot. Uh, the display here is uh, a clock, and you will see actually the status lights for my modem uh, in the top right above the clock. Uh, this is a piece of plastic that I used some of the nightshades uh, car customizing stuff on to make it into a tinted glass, and that stuff's setting up in a box behind it. The switches here on the left hand side upper are uh, my fans. Actually the first one on the left is my inlet fan. There's a 10 inch fan right by my uh, right shoulder that lets air into the compartment to keep me and the computer cool. I have sort of an updraft system going on here so the air comes in through there. Uh, the only way that it can go, the only escape it has is up through this fan through the tower. And then up top there is a 21 inch fan that blows out into the room, uh, creating kind of a vacuum in the upper part of this because it's fully enclosed. Uh, so I wind up with a nice draft going on through here. And that is the second switch, is the 21 inch fan. Now up here on the right hand side, the left switch is for the blue lights, which are sort of my, uh, my mood lighting, my primary lighting while I'm gaming. And the right hand switch they're on right now is my bright white lights for when I need to be able to read and write. Uh, and uh, I'm using them right now to illuminate things. Uh, the flashing lights there are my router status lights so I can see what's going on there. I can actually see uh, you know, how many computers are accessing the, uh, the router and everything and if the wireless is working there. And on the right hand side of that is the controls for my Logitech 5.1 system. Uh, I think it's a little bit tough to see there but anyway I've got a volume knob uh, and the base control and uh, power button and whatnot for that. The speakers are actually located, oh, let's see if it'll focus, behind these. The, uh, these are central AC grills that I bought. Uh, there's a number of them for, for the various different speakers, and I also use those for the for the inlet fan and on the outside for the fans as well to uh, cover those up on the outside. Now, uh, down here I have the, the Logitech, uh, the new Logitech HOTAS uh, force feedback setup, um, and I have it flush mounted to make it look completely built in. Uh, these bezels, making these bezels for around the bases to cover up the rough edges of the wood and everything where I set it in there were not easy to make. Uh, that was probably the most challenging part of the project besides managing all the crazy angles and stuff when I was cutting the pieces. Uh, actually, I have my mouse up here on the, on the right hand side. As of right now, pretty much everything I have is Logitech. Um, since I replaced some Razer stuff over the last week, I was not happy with the way the Razer stuff was wearing out so fast. Um, but the mouse is actually a SteelSeries World of Warcraft uh, epic, I think they call it, uh, mouse or legendary. Um, I did not want it to have that kind of appearance to it, so I actually used some uh, matte black vinyl and I kind of skinned it. Uh, and I also covered over the World of Warcraft icon there. I left a little bit ring, uh, that little ring open uh, for the customizable light, so I can actually set the lights to uh, match the keyboard and the G13. Uh, so all three of those items, I can change the color to pretty much any color you can imagine. Uh, 
now. All right, the next thing here is my lights. If you look up here, I'm sure it's kind of hard to see with the glare. I actually kind of uh, designed and built these light fixtures from scratch. Um, I, I used plywood and made a box up there. Uh, I had to do kind of a, a wacky thing to uh, fit the house. They're like the regular LED replacement bulbs for like house fixtures. That's the white lights. The blue lights are uh, some of those 12 volt, uh, 12 LED strips primarily for car customization. Uh, so the cool thing here is, if we go back to the switches and turn off the white light, this is how they look most of the time with just the left switch on. Uh, you have just the two blue lights. When I flip the switch, the white lights overpower the blue lights so you can't see that anymore in the rear fixture. And I have bright light throughout the pod. All right, now, I'm going to go ahead and go through the shutdown procedure here just to kind of show you. Um, if I do the startup procedure, you won't be able to see much in the dark. But uh, go up here, see if it'll focus. All right, so I'm going to hit the power button to shut down. Shutdown sequence initiated. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip all my switches. So I'm going to start here on the left, and I would flip these off if they were on. And over here, flip off my lights and then flip off my master. Reverse, I flip on the master, which lights up the other switches. Flip on my fans, flip on the lights. Push the power switch to start it up. It starts up this fan and the LED up there also. And uh, then we go through the normal startup procedure. While that is happening, I will show you how the, the seat setup works here. So, Uh, because of space limitations, um, I had to come up with kind of a creative way to get in and out of there. So I actually built, this is the most unfinished part of the whole thing right now, but I built uh, a sort of a seat on rails here that also uh, has the door as a built-in part of it. Um, the rails are just the, these wood strips that are in there, and I couldn't put anything out here on the, uh, on the pergo floor, so I had to get kind of creative on how that works, but I have uh, five casters underneath which are actually fixed in position so they can no longer rotate. And it just slides in kind of like a drawer. Uh, when I'm in there, I actually have a latch that I can latch it closed with at the top to keep it nice and tight and keep it from vibrating. Uh, speaking of vibration right now, the reason that my seat setup is rather unfinished at the moment, uh, I just installed a base shaker, a butt shaker underneath the bottom of the chair. So uh, now in, in first person shooter games, at least the chair vibrates real nice so like when you're uh, firing a machine gun you can feel like the recoil from it through the chair uh, hopefully that will tie in with the uh, force feedback in the joystick so I'll be feeling it in my hand in and in the chair which should uh, kind of increase immersion quite a bit uh, so right now I'm kind of working on that I had to mount the, the chair on rubber hangers I actually used exhaust hangers in order to uh, absorb the vibration so it didn't make everything rattle uh, and that's the last thing I did, so things are kind of uh, unpainted here and whatnot. Now, realize that this whole thing uh, was done by me, a complete amateur who's never done anything like this before, so uh, there's, you know, some symmetry issues where things didn't come out exactly right. Uh, and also, I'm sure some of you have noticed that there are screw heads showing and, and whatnot. I would love to fill those in and paint them over. However, I'm kind of concerned about the uh, having the ability to fairly easily take this apart um, because it's very likely that I'll wind up moving within the next few years. So I'm not sure I want to bury those screw heads and then not be able to find them and have to kind of destroy things to take it apart. So anyway, here we go. This is, uh, once again, the complete layout in here. And that is my mech cockpit. Hope you enjoyed the show, folks. Thank you very much.